I thank God for the privilege and the honor to stand before you. I just, um, I'm just grateful this morning. I thank God, you know, for Pastor Griffin giving me so many opportunities to stand behind this sacred desk. Give honor to his wife, our First Lady Barbara Griffin, this morning. Thank God for Deacon Moore being with me in the pulpit. Thank you. I just thank God for um, Reverend Gray being back there. Thank you. I just thank God for her. Every time I see her, I'm just so happy. And thank God for Reverend Sullivan being in the house today. And all my brothers and sisters in Christ, Brother Sore, God bless you. I just thank God my, my mother's here with me today. I praise the Lord. Um, we're going to go, I'm going to just tell you to uh, mark, mark your Bible. We're going to go to uh, the gospel according to Luke. Uh, Luke, the first chapter, uh, verse 26 through 38. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, come, oh, ye faithful, joy. Amen. Amen. 
She said, let it be unto me according to your will. Hallelujah. And the angel left her. I want to talk a little bit about, uh, this morning about embracing God's plan for your life, no matter how impossible it sounds. I want you to say this with me. I can do whatever God says I can do. Okay? Yeah. I can do whatever God says I can do. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, we just come before you, Lord God, in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you and we praise you, Lord God, for salvation through the birth of your son, Jesus Christ, oh God. Oh God, we adore you, we lift you up, we magnify you, Lord God, for you are great and you are greatly to be praised, oh God. Oh God, we thank you, Lord God, for answering our prayers, oh God. We thank you, Lord God, for your Holy Spirit is with us, oh God. Speak to our hearts this morning. Give us what we need, oh God. Oh God, I pray that you would use me, oh God. Oh, let me decrease that you may increase in me, Lord God. Let them see you high and lifted up, oh God. And I'll be so grateful to give your name the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Oh, we already here in December. Oh, I can't even believe it. A few, few days from Christmas Day. Like, how did that happen? <laughs> and I know that the holidays are a hard time. It's going to be difficult for a lot of people uh, this year with everything that's happening with the pandemic, the loss of loved ones and everything else. But I just want everybody, it's my prayer, that everybody would be encouraged and that the presence of the Lord would just fill your heart with love, joy, hope, peace that only comes through Christ. Amen? Amen. We're gonna, this morning, you know, our text is come, you know, coming from Luke, and this is when the angel promised the birth of Jesus Christ to Mary. So we're gonna put our view, we gotta just step into Mary's shoes this morning. <laughs> uh, when she embraced that plan of God, even though it sounds impossible. The Bible tells us in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sends Gabriel to Nazareth to visit a young woman named Mary. And Nazareth, uh, it was Joseph and Mary hometown. It was re remote from Jerusalem. It was away from the Jewish, the center of Jewish worship. It was located on a major trade route and it was often visited by Gentile merchants and Roman soldiers. So it had a poor reputation in morals and religion on the part of the people of Nazareth. For these reasons, the Jews despised Nazareth. Uh, Nathaniel, you know, he had already uh, had his preconceived belief about Nazareth. You know, he went, he said, uh, to Nathaniel heard that Jesus was from Nazareth. He said to Philip, can any good thing come out of Nazareth? You know, so he already had his preconceived ideas, but we must not judge a book by its cover. You know, thank God he didn't look into that because it would have he would have missed Jesus, the love of Jesus, you know, if he hadn't went there. And I thank God that he became a disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. The, the, the angel came to Nazareth and the angel had to deliver a special message to Mary. The angel uh, didn't send a text message to say that he was on his way. He just showed up. He just appeared to this young virgin girl had, that had recently been engaged to a carpenter named Joseph. She was young. She had her whole life ahead of her. And I'm sure that she was looking forward to married life. And the angel came to her. This was a divine interruption <laughs> in her life. But nevertheless, she was available to God. She was available to be used by God. There are times in our lives where we get a divine interruption. You know, and sometimes, you know, we need that divine interruption. Sometimes God allows things to happen in our life not to harm us, but most of all, to reveal his will and his, his plan for our life. Right, so the angel said to Mary, greeting, 
wings, you who are highly favored, the Lord is with you. Oh, she was troubled by this. The Amplified Bible says she was greatly troubled. She was disturbed. She was confused, wondering what kind of greeting this might be. She was afraid because why? Because she was human. And the angel showed up to us and greeted us that way. We would be, we would be frightened. So she was a human. She was an ordinary person like you and I. Mm -hmm. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid. Mm -hmm. And do you know that do not be afraid or do not fear? God, the Lord tells us that so many times in the Bible, 365 times, one day for each day of the year, the Lord is telling us do not be afraid. No matter what you see, no matter what's going on, no matter what the news report is saying, the Bible says let not your heart be troubled. Jesus said let not your heart be troubled. Hallelujah. So we can't let anxiety, you know, about the future seep in when the Lord tells us do not be afraid. So this angel came to Mary and says, you have found favor with God. And I don't know about you, that is great news. Hallelujah. It's one thing to have the favor of man, which is good. But the favor of God, if you have the favor of God, you have everything. Hallelujah. I want to have the favor of God. I want to be approved by God. I looked up a little research on favor, and it says the favor of God can be described as a tangible evidence that a person has the approval of the Lord. Yeah. Favor is closely related to grace. Those who receive Jesus as their Savior are, have the favor of God. We are saved by grace through faith. Hallelujah. And it's a gift of God. We can't boast. We didn't do it by ourselves. We got it from Jesus Christ because he paid the penalty of our sin that we may have forgiveness of sins and eternal life. We have the grace of God. It's a free gift, but Jesus paid an expensive price for it. This Christmas, we may not have a whole lot under the tree, but if you have Christ in your heart, that's something that money cannot buy. Having favor doesn't mean everything in our lives will go perfect. But if we keep our eyes on Jesus, he's able to take us through the challenges of life. He's able to take us through pain. He's able to take us through disappointment. He's able to take us through suffering with grace, with peace, with joy in our heart. Hallelujah. That's the grace of God. Oh, you know, it, life may not be easy, but God gave us the promise in his word. He says, I'll never leave you. I will never forsake you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mary was a poor, uneducated young virgin girl. All the characteristics of people of her day would say she, she wasn't qualified. She wasn't qualified for such an honor as being the mother of Jesus. But Mary found favor with God. When God calls us to an assignment, it's the often the first thing that we do is we look at our limitations. Oh, we look, we, we, we look at, you know, remember Moses, he says, I can't speak. No. <laughs> well, you know, that's what we do. We say, oh, I can't speak. I don't have enough. Uh, you know, when the, the, the angel came to Zechariah, he says, oh, I'm too old. And the, the angel said, I've heard your prayer. I'm giving you a son that you've been that you prayed for, uh, John the Baptist. But he says, "I'm too old." So he went in there with doubt, and God had to tell him, "Shut up, shut him up." So sometimes we just have to be quiet. He said, "I'm going to close your mouth until it comes to pass." But you know, we are not to look at our limitations. We ought to keep our eyes on God because God has no limits. Hallelujah. God could do in you far more than you could ever imagine. Hallelujah. The appearance of the angel scared Mary, but then the angel comforts her and tells her, and behold, you shall conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and his name shall be called Jesus. His name will be called Jesus. Jesus in the Greek word is 
Joshua, Savior. You know, this was the long-awaited Messiah, Jesus. Hallelujah. And he says, he shall be great and he shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the kingdom, there shall be no end. Then Mary said to the angel, how shall this be, seeing I know not a man? How is this going to happen? In other words, this does not make sense to my natural mind. Uh, this doesn't, this seems impossible. But the angel told her, for with God, nothing is impossible. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible. The birth of Jesus to a virgin is a miracle. And sometimes people find that hard to believe. But you know what? If you believe that God is the creator of heaven and earth, don't you know that he has the power? That he has the power that he can do anything he can? A, 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 a child into a virgin? Hallelujah. Amen. He's able to do it. The Bible tells us we have to believe. For without faith it's impossible to please God. Those who come to God must believe that he is. And he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. So we have to believe. The angel answered Mary and said, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. And the power of the highest shall overshadow you. So the power of God overcame Mary. Oh, you know, and that, that's, that's a wonderful thing. That the power of God overcame her and infused her. And put that child in her and she conceived. Oh, this was the long-awaited Messiah, anticipated, prophesied by Isaiah. He says, for unto us a child is born, unto us a, child, a son has been given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Hallelujah. This was no ordinary child. Hallelujah. This was the savior of the world. It was the word that became flesh and dwelt among us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mary had the privilege of becoming the mother of Jesus. She had the honor of doing something that has never been done. And she was obedient. Hallelujah. Oh, Mary's answer was very simple. She says, you know, behold, I'm your handmaid of the Lord, meaning I'm your servant. Be it unto me according to your will. You know, she was a servant. She laid aside all of her rights and her will. And that's what being a servant is all about. When we become a servant of the Lord, we relinquish our rights. We relinquish our ways. And we surrender to humble obedience unto the Lord. She didn't hesitate to do what God asked of her. And neither should we. Because when we do what the Lord says. Don't you know it benefits someone else? Hallelujah. It's not about us. You know, someone out here today needs a word from you. Someone needs an encouraging word from you. Someone needs a smile from you. There's so many hurting people out here. Somebody out here needs your prayer this morning. Hallelujah. So when we serve God out of the love that he has given us, we're blessing other people. Hallelujah. We are blessed to be a blessing to someone else. Hallelujah. So she didn't hesitate. She, did, she didn't let the what ifs be her deciding factor whether she was going to obey. Because, you know, when God asks for us to do something, when he brings that work towards us, that plan, his plan for us, we say, what if? What if this happens? What if that happens? You know, she didn't let that what if be the deciding factor. Mary risked being talked about by the people in her village. Oh, pregnant by the Holy Spirit? Who's going to believe this? You know, she risked possibly being stoned if Joseph didn't take her as his wife. But she put all of that aside and she embraced God's plan for her. She gave herself completely to the Lord. She didn't hold back despite of the risk. She said, be it unto me according to your will. She believed the word of the angel and she agreed, although it seemed human.
holding her baby boy in her arms. <laughs> oh, and you know, that baby boy she hold, held in her arms would be the one who would hold her for all eternity. Hallelujah. She didn't miss out on that opportunity. But you know what? I wonder how many plans, how many good things have we missed? Opportunities because we weren't obedient unto the Lord. Hallelujah. And I had to think about that. I was like, oh, Lord, help me. Help me, Holy Ghost. I don't want to miss out on the things that God has for me because I'm afraid, because I don't want to put myself aside. No, we have to change our way of thinking. Hallelujah. Make 
provision for you. He will always, whatever he brought you to, he's able to bring you through. Hallelujah. you got to know. you just got to step out on faith, and he'll be with you every step of the way. Hallelujah. He's not going to leave you out there. He says, but seek the kingdom and all my righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. So as you go, he's going to do the adding. Hallelujah. As you go, he's going to give you more strength. As you go, he's going to give you more joy. As he goes, you're going to get more peace. Hallelujah. Because it's all in Jesus. Hallelujah. So I want you to embrace God's plan for your life. Hallelujah. Because he gave his only begotten son. That's so whoever shall believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That was God's plan. Why? Because he loves us. Hallelujah. He loves us so much that he gave us the greatest gift that can ever be given through his son, Jesus Christ. Yes, he was born in a manger. Hallelujah. He was born in a dirty, dark place. Hallelujah. And I'm so glad about that because I know that he could get into my dark, dirty place. Hallelujah. Where sometimes we sin. Hallelujah. We don't even know it. But God, he already went and sacrificed And we give you 